Welcome everyone to our data security platform demo session. Comfortus data security platform helps companies to achieve compliance with privacy and data security regulations and industry mandates. We help companies to understand um, risk exposure uh, by discovering the sensitive data assets and the data lineage and to instrument data protection consistently and at a scale, gaining full control over sensitive data. And all that requires a platform that goes beyond simple encryption technology. Organizations need to cover more ground. Data security is an ongoing process. And with constantly changing environments, um, a data security uh, platform that only kind of uh, covers specific areas is not enough. So um, a, a platform really needs to cover uh, um, larger ground. It needs to automate and ease the operation of data discovery and classification, but also policies, and of course, the protection and deprotection of sensitive data. Only with the understanding of where sensitive data is, who is accessing it, and what the lineage is, organizations can create policies um, that fit to their business processes. And then they can enforce them. And all of that, of course, only makes sense with the last bit that you see on the screen here, when you're in, able to integrate into applications and your existing cybersecurity infrastructure. And that needs to be done in a simple fashion and in an acceptable amount of time. So what are we covering today? During the session, we will cover four scenarios. And um, these scenarios are basically snapshots of how different roles in an organization can use Comfortus data security platform to achieve compliance, protect the data, enforce policies, configure our solution. In the first demo, we will take a look at how our discovery and classification solution works. And uh, you will learn how to gain comprehensive, continuous uh, visibility into sensitive uh, data, into PII data, personal data across the entire enterprise how to understand the context, the business context of that sensitive data, for example, for security purposes, for privacy, for governance, risk, and compliance operations. And then uh, also understand um, kind of how to eliminate security risk um, stemming from unknown data, unknown sensitive data in your organization. In the second module, we will cover um, how easy it is to integrate our solution into, for example, an as-a-service environment, in this case, Salesforce, and how companies, how organizations can enforce policies, can make sure that only those individuals who are allowed to can actually see the sensitive information. Equally important as integration into kind of applications like Salesforce, for example, is the ease of configuration of a solution. How easy is it to actually change a policy, make sure um, that kind of whatever you have in your paper policies is reflected and enforced uh, with a data security solution? And that's what we will take a look at in the third. A scenario. And the last scenario, the last uh, kind of uh, session, the last demo we will take a look at is our auditing. Um, how can security administrators uh, monitor and what kind of uh, um, actions can they take on kind of the insights um, they gain from our deep protection and protection uh, operations. And with that, we will start with the first demo, our discovery and classification solution. I'm really happy that uh, Aaron Kinchen, our so uh, solution architect, is with us. Uh, and we'll jump into the role of the security or compliance team, taking a look at their data landscape, finding out more about where sensitive data is located, who is accessing it, where is it stored, what is the lineage. And with that, I'm handing over to Aaron Kinchen. OK, so with Comforte's discovery and classification solution, we aim to provide organizations with a clear picture of the whereabouts and also the usage of their data across their entire IT landscape. And we break this process down into five simple stages. And throughout this demonstration, we'll look to cover each of those stages. So in the first stage, uh, we actually monitor the network traffic to understand all of that sensitive data that is traversing the network. So that allows us to produce this on-screen representation showing the topology of an organization's network, where we can see all of these different repositories that may or may not contain sensitive data. Now, in order to monitor the network traffic, uh, we can actually integrate with existing network sniffing technologies that your organization might be using, such as Gigamon, Ixia, we can integrate and intercept at an ICAP level uh, through the proxy or on a firewall, or we could do network tap or spam ports, for example. Now, using this network monitoring, we can essentially interrogate those packets to understand both 
known and also unknown repositories that you might have across your organization. Now, as part of this, we can also understand the relationship between different repositories. So you can see here that I've got a CRM application in the middle. And instantly, we can see that this CRM application has a relationship with several other devices within your organization, where from that network monitoring, we've actually detected a traffic exchange between each of these repositories, such as going from the application to a database, for example. Now, in stage two of our discovery and classification process, we start to maintain this dynamic inventory, which is automatically maintained throughout the tool and also through that network monitoring that we're running. Now, on the screen now, we can actually see a list of repositories that we want to scan to locate sensitive data. And you can see that we already support a variety of different database type or data sources, such as a um, structured or unstructured repositories within Amazon. We support Google Cloud, we can support Google Drive, and also a variety of different database vendors as well. Most recently, we've announced support for um, discovery and classification on an Office 365 environment. So this list is constantly developing as our experience grows. Now from this inventory, we can now see the exact URL from where these repositories are located. Um, and you can also see that we're actually using native connection techniques in order to connect to these repositories, such as SMB for a file share or JDBC when we're going to a database, for example. Once we've made that connection to the repository, we simply only need a read-only user account in order to connect, authenticate, and start performing the scanning. And when in stage three, this is where we're actually scanning those repositories, so both for structured and also unstructured repositories. So we're looking for things such as names, addresses, tax codes, or any custom content that we might define. On the right hand side then, we have these two columns. So we've got this PII candidates column and also just the PIIs column. Now, essentially what's happening here is that any sensitive data that we find on the respective repositories, they're uploaded to our appliances and they are instantly considered as PII candidate data. And they will be considered as PII candidate data until they are associated with what we call as a root data asset. So this now comes into stage four of our discovery and classification process, where we're actually looking to consolidate the data and associate it with unique individuals. Now, essentially, a root data asset, it's configured by the users, um, and it essentially acts as a single source of truth. So it's a CSV file, a database, or your Salesforce CRM, um, uh, application where you know that the information stored there is correct about people, such as this is John Smith, uh, this is his tax code, this is his address, and so on. Now, essentially, once we discover sensitive data on those repositories, that is uploaded into our appliances and instantly compared against these root data assets. In the case we find a match, it's then considered as managed PII. Um, and it's now usable and presentable to our users as well. So this not only allows us to reduce the false positives for discovered data, but also allows us to add business context to the information that we find. And we also use a combination of artificial intelligence and machine learning to ensure that the correct PII is associated with the correct individuals. The next stage in our process is then to build out these data assets. So these data assets, they are similar to virtual groups, um, and they are grouped based on what makes sense to the organization, such as the location to comply with local privacy regulations, or just essentially um, groups based on their association with the organization, such as your employees, your customers, your partners, and so on. But now essentially we can start to understand where my USA customer data is stored. Um, so instantly, when I select this data asset, we can see exactly how much USA customer data we are storing. So that's our data at rest aspect, and also how much USA customer data we are processing. So this comes under our data in motion as well. If I was just to select stored, 
we can instantly start to drill down into the different repository types, the different products, and also the different file types that contain USA customer data. Now, if I was just to select database, again, we start to drill down even further into the exact databases, the different vendor, and also the exact location of the databases that contain USA customer data. Now, of course, as part of our discovery and classification solution, uh, we also apply uh, discovery and classification to unstructured data. So things such as JSON files, different documents, text files, and so on. If I was just to select the CSV here, I'll scroll back down, and we can see a list of CSV files that contain USA customer data. And now I can even drill down even further into these different files to see exactly what data elements con are contained within these files that are associated to our USA customers. So as I select this one at random, we can instantly see that within this file, we, it contains different country information, different phone numbers, different states, and also some insurance information as well. So that really concludes the first four stages of our discovery and classification process. So now in the fifth and final stage, we can actually start to use that data. So we produce all of this discovered data into a master catalog. Um, and we do this essentially so that we can start to use this and manage this personal data more intelligently. Um, and in this sense, we can start to understand the data lineage, but also exactly what sort of PII information we store about people. So as part of our offering, we provide this data subject access request ticketing system, um, but we also provide a rich API, which allows us to integrate with other tools you might be using in order to enhance that output. So here we can create tickets, we can review PII, and we can generate reports and send that to data subjects. If I was just to click the John Smith ticket here and instantly collect the personal data usage, we can see all of the personal data that we store about John Smith within our organization. So things such as contact information, demographic, financial information, government IDs, and so on and so forth. But that's not all, because we can also start to understand the data lineage um, associated with John Smith. So exactly where is this data stored? So for example, different transactions. So this is associated with our data in motion aspect. Um, so how that data is exchanged across the organization. And I can see that on the 12th of March, 2018, one document was updated or transferred on this CRM application. And if I was to select this, I would be able to expand this and see exactly what information was changed within this document. We also look at the data at rest aspect as well. So exactly what files contain John Smith's data and also what databases are containing John Smith's data as well. So that concludes the demonstration from my perspective. So that was just an overview of those five stages for discovery and classification. So where we're monitoring that network to understand how that sensitive data traverses the network and to start maintaining that dynamic inventory. We then looked at how we scan both structured and unstructured repositories before we started to consolidate this data and associate it with unique individuals. And that came lastly with how we produce this information into a master catalog to see how we can use that across the organization.